Will Call of Duty die under Xbox? This is a question I've been thinking about ever since Microsoft announced that they were acquiring Activision Blizzard in 2022. Ever since World at War, Call of Duty has been one of my favorite franchises ever. Zombies is amazing and the campaigns were wonderful. I was never that much into the older multiplayers, partly because I didn't have the internet when it came out, but many people loved it. But let's look at the past and try to predict the future of Call of Duty. Because for those who don't know, history are doomed to repeat it. When I think of franchises, I feel like Call of Duty mostly parallels the Marvel Cinematic Universe. From humble beginnings of strong passion ideas and creativity, to cracks starting to form when popularity and money are brought into the picture, to what could happen if the ship is misled. To show what I mean, I'm going to copy the phases of Marvel and put Call of Duty in them. Starting with Phase 1. I would say World at War to Black Ops 2 would be Phase 1 of the Marvel movies. Nothing but perfection, with a few flaws that didn't matter too much. They focused on what mattered. Gameplay, music, characters, themes, atmospheres, and progression. Because both franchises did what no one else has done at that time. Put out incredibly high quality content yearly. Was it the best? No, there was a few problems, but you knew when you bought the ticket or the game, you were getting what you were paid for. If you liked shooters, Call of Duty was one of the best ones to buy at that time. Each COD, I would say, did something called postmortem, looking at the game and trying to figure out where they could improve and what went wrong. For example, World at War campaign was incredible, but with Black Ops, they wanted to not only just do a sequel, but instead of doing another war story, like they've done for the last few games, they wanted to make a spy thriller. So they did it, and it was amazing. And then with Black Ops 2, they tried to do even more. So setting it in the future, once again, but still connected to the Black Ops 1 and World at War timeline. They also added two storylines with player choice, so you could actually affect the way the game ended. The multiplayer tried to be innovative with each game, and zombies got a lot better for most of the zombies community. It got craftables, new weapons, storylines, more maps, easter eggs, more easter eggs, bigger easter eggs. And for the most part, everything was improving, like Marvel in Phase 1. But things, things would not stay the same. Phase 2, the next phase of Marvel, is when they had some great movies, the quality was going down a little bit. So even though they put out some movies where the quality was way higher than the first phase, some of the lows were much lower than phase one. And so you kind of had this weird split where you knew most of the time Marvel movies were up in quality so you would still go and want to see all of them, but you still would be disappointed at a very few select movies. On a side note, is it just me or I never liked the Ant-Man movies? I don't know why, I really just despise all three of them. I think they're very boring. I will say I liked Ant-Man in Civil War, but I just, I just hate him in his own movie. But moving past that, Call of Duty is no different. Many CODs were broken, missing features, or tried to do a lot of microtransactions when they swapped to the next generation of consoles. For example, Black Ops 3 had a horrible campaign. Try and go boom. All right multiplayer, except for the fact that people are getting tired of the wall running mechanic after they stole that from Titanfall. So it was getting a little stale at that point when for three games straight, they had wall running. But Zombies was amazing. Back in the day, Call of Duty was mainly a polished three game mode game. Campaign, multiplayer, and zombies if you're Treyarch, and Spec Ops if you're Infinity War. The game felt worth your money because you were basically paying 20 bucks for each mode to make a $60 game, and some of those modes you can play for hours and hours in, so it felt like it was really worth your money back in the day. But in that era, you were lucky to get two good modes. Multiplayer and zombies could be good, the campaign would suck, unless you were World War II, and then everything was bad except the graphics, but then again, almost every Call of Duty has pretty good graphics. Black Ops 3 Zombies was truly the send-off to the zombie storyline, bringing back some of the best maps and making some of the best new ones. The COD community was in a weird spot where they were missing the old days because they were getting tired of the same sci-fi game every year. And they were missing the days of more modern times in World War II. And if they did do a World War II game, even then, they're hand to a developer who would fumble the bag when it was really easy to make one. It felt like at that time, Call of Duty quit paying attention to the players and they started to chase the money. Instead of listening to what the players actually wanted, they were more focused on microtransactions and loot boxes. The future of Call of Duty was becoming shaky at that time. Phase 3. Marvel Phase 3 was when the cracks were showing, but you knew you were near the end, so did it really matter at that point? Civil War and Infinity War are some of the best movies in the saga, or best movies of all time to be honest. 
But we also got movies like Captain Marvel, Ant-Man and the Wasp, a shift from making great characters and stories to wanting to make more money. More movies equals more money to Marvel. Marvel thought at this point their fans would watch anything, so they opened the floodgates and decided to start producing as many shows and movies as possible for the next phase, but they needed to wrap up phase 3 before they go to a new direction. So Endgame came out to conclude the Infinity Saga, which had some of the best moments in the series, but once the film was over, there was basically no reason to stay. Most of your favorite characters were gone at this point. It's when you realize most of the storyline, other than Captain America's storyline, was pretty average, but it was the characters, the acting, the fights, the drama that made it amazing. The Marvel movies, as you knew it, were going to change forever because they left what originally made them great. Call of Duty is similar to this. COD finally listened and returned to the modern era with modern warfare. A new engine, some familiar characters, in a new direction. This had to be where COD would come back to being perfect and promise of no more loot boxes and season passes. It seemed that they finally had listened to what people wanted. Modern Warfare received pretty good, sort of, because the campaign was really good, but the multiplayer had a lot of glitches at first, and the metas were ruining the game. And then Spec Ops was terrible, but for many, with a few patches, the game seemed to be very nostalgic, but also a new and refreshing. But something many could not predict was coming soon. Something that would bring COD to the lion light, but also would make the game worse. For me personally, I love Modern Warfare. I thought Modern Warfare was one of the best Call of Duties in the recent year. It was very refreshing. The gameplay, the gunplay, everything for me personally, I loved. But something we could not predict was coming soon. Phase 4. Marvel's Phase 4 had a lot of people excited for it. What could possibly be happening next? Marvel abandoned the roots of what made Phase 1 so good. Now that they had a money printer and Disney needed content for Disney+, Plus, Marvel made as many TV shows as possible. Phase 4 is creative bankrupt. Most people who enjoy the old movies left the series, only coming back when something caught their eye. Marvel sits in a weird spot where they make movies for people who don't even like comic book movies. This brings us to COD. After a few months of Modern Warfare, Call of Duty wanted to copy Battle Royale once again. They've already copied it with Black Ops 4 trying to replace the campaign with Battle Royale. It failed because it had a price tag on it, partly. Because Call of Duty wanted to adapt and improve on the formula, they thought this time, if they made it free, maybe it could work. They put it on the same engine and launcher as Modern Warfare, so you would have to install both at the same time. And it was a huge success, making tons of money and bringing back the franchise for many people. But it shifted the game to be more focused on the Battle Royale than the actual Call of Duty experience no more. It was, in fact, a different game. After seeing the success of Warzone, their Battle Royale, Activision realized every game after this has to try to copy the Modern Warfare formula to keep it going, starting with Cold War being the direct game after Modern Warfare. Cold War had a great campaign, bringing back player choice and some dialogue in a few sections. The zombies felt mostly fresh. I didn't really enjoy the multiplayer, but some did. The game felt like fresh air into the franchise, but also the gameplay and graphics seemed to be a downgrade from what Modern Warfare did the year before. The game also had to be integrated into Warzone for better and worse. The year after that was Vanguard. The campaign was bad, multiplayer was mostly hated, and zombies was also bad except for one classic map. Missing content, features, and tons of bugs, and it also required a Warzone tie-in. Modern Warfare 2 was basically Modern Warfare 1 in my opinion. More basic and bland, and then the year after that, Modern Warfare 3, which was really just DLC from Modern Warfare 2, but a full $70. Everything's a copy of a copy of a copy. Just to say, the games are starting to become stale once again, because it was an assembly line, creativity was taken out, and all that mattered was the games, skins, and microtransactions were selling nothing else mattered. The game could be poor quality and the casuals didn't care anymore. They would buy the next game no matter what. Warzone got worse in quality and yet people stayed and kept playing it. The cracks are on the wall. It has been for years. COD will only be good if you quit buying the bad games and force them to make good games again. The catch cow caught the eye of Microsoft who needed extra content for their Game Pass service. Call of Duty is now most profitable than it's ever been. Microsoft bought Activision and Call of Duty 
for $69 billion. Nice. Microsoft said it was for King, the makers of Candy Crush. But let's be honest, it was probably for Call of Duty. Now you may be wondering, what does that story have to do with anything? Well, it's to take a look at track records and see how they're going. To see what is the state of Call of Duty. Call of Duty isn't dying yet. It's making so much money, more money than it ever has before. But if you don't start to right the ship, it will slowly start to die. But now Microsoft is the leader of Call of Duty. So what is their track record? This is a few examples of that. Bought Rare at the peak of them making the best games and turned them into a slop company making games for the Kinect. Only now, they're starting to come back with games such as Sea of Thieves and Grounded. These games, I do enjoy myself, but to compare them to what they did in the 90s and early 2000s, they're not even close. They started the company, 343 Industries, to carry on Halo's legacy. And what did 343 do with Halo? They killed it by not listening to the fans and releasing buggy, broken games. The Coalition took over after Epic Games left the Gears of War series. Coalition made ground up for Microsoft has basically killed the Gears of War franchise from being the peak that it was. Changing the games to make it more modern instead of following what the fans actually wanted. Where is the Gears of War Phoenix collection? No one knows. And do not forget the recent closure of studios that were beloved by fans. Ninja Theory taking seven years to make a five hour game. I personally love Hellblade 1 and I do like Hellblade 2, but seven years for a five hour game is not the best investment of time. Microsoft doesn't know how to lead studios. Best hope for COD is that they're like Minecraft, make a game so beloved that they can't mess it up. Minecraft is a timeless game, except the developer Mojang, made also by Microsoft, is incredibly lazy. They only update the game every few years, and it's four years in this generation, and they still haven't updated Minecraft for next generation hardware, where it was promised ray tracing, and they even showed it off at the start of the Series X reveal. And Mojang has also updated Minecraft for PS4 Pro to have support 4K resolution, but it still runs at 1080p on Xbox consoles. I'm excited for the newest Call of Duty this year. The teaser trailer looks absolutely amazing. I love Treyarch, and I hope they make zombies good this time. I think this Call of Duty could be amazing, if not one of the best. And I'm not going to lie, I am absolutely excited for it. But, I'm nervous for the future of Call of Duty. It's now under worse leadership, and it could end up killing the franchise in the future. Call of Duty makes so much money, and it's on top right now, don't get me wrong. And it will be for a while. But let's not forget, Halo was Call of Duty before Call of Duty was Call of Duty. And Gears of War was on top too back in the day. Call of Duty, Halo, and Gears were the peak of online gaming in the 2000s. And now all three are owned by Microsoft, and the other two have now disappeared into oblivion. Microsoft is known for killing franchises. I hope this is different this time. The ship was sinking before Microsoft bought them. Not in terms of money, because they're making tons of money, but in quality. I think the next few Call of Duties will be good. But only time will tell if Microsoft can actually lead Call of Duty and make it better than it was. Let's not forget, Putting rotten fruit next to healthy fruit won't make the rock go away. It will only spread. And if you're Activision and you're Call of Duty, putting them with a studio that doesn't know how to lead studios will possibly start to affect Call of Duty. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. I would also very much appreciate you subscribing if you could. But other than that, that's all I had.